Now in this session, what we're going to do is, is look at basic geometry building. And we're going to do this using some layout grid. So I'm going to use utilities, layout grid. I'm going to have an origin at zero, rotation angle at zero. And in the X direction, I want nine lines. Now the spacing on these are going to be eight, 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 five, five, eight, eight, eight. In the Y direction, I'm going to have five lines and I'm going to have a uniform spacing of six meters. I'm going to rename this layout grid level zero. And I'm then going to OK this. You'll see the layout grid on the screen. I'm just going to resize that. And you can see the spacing six meters in the Y direction, eight meters in the X, then five, and then eight again. Now over here, I'm going to copy this layout grid and I'm going to copy it in the Z direction by six meters. I'm then going to rename this layout grid to be layout grid level six meters. Now if I rotate this, you'll see two layout grids, one above the other, and I'm going to use some of the tools to automatically create the column members between the grids. So if I go to the line by grid, multi-vertical, I'm going to drag the tool around this area, look at the isometric and you can see the columns in that area. I'm going to repeat that here. I'm going to pick these two locations, this location and this location. So these are all the columns that we're going to use for the building. I'm going to switch off the visualization of layout grid one, zero. Now in these areas, I need to create some beams. Now I'm actually going to do this by creating some surfaces. Now those surfaces are going to be used for floor loading. So surface by grid, multi-horizontal. So I'm going to drag around here and you can see I've created some surfaces. I'm going to repeat that in these areas. Now Phil is going to explain more about the surface loading later on. Now once I've created those surfaces, in these areas I need some surfaces but I need to create some horizontal line members first of all. So I'm going to look back on plan, go back to line by grid, multi-horizontal, and I'm going to create some lines through here, through here, down through there, and down through there. Now, here, I want to create a horizontal line, but I don't want it to be split at this location. So I'm going to go back to the multi-horizontal tool. But before I use it, I'm going to go to the settings, and I'm going to create one feature per drag on the grid. So I can create a line here now that isn't split. I'm going to do the same here and here. Finally, these two lines there. Okay, so I've finished using the grids now, so I'm going to switch the grids off. And I'm going to take some lines, these ones here, and I'm going to split them. So geometry line by splitting. And I'm going to split all of the lines into two. Now the reason I'm doing this is I can now select this point to this point here, back down to there, and create some lines that represent some bracing. I'm going to repeat that in this area. Now, rather than having a concrete core to this building, I'm going to have a braced steel core. So that's why I'm creating these lines here. You can see them there. Okay, now I've created those lines, I can fill in the rest of the surfaces. So I'm going to select the lines. I'm selecting these lines in an anti-clockwise direction. Once I've selected them, I hit the surface button and you'll see the surface appear on the screen. I just need to repeat that in a number of locations. So here on this side, again, just select the lines anti-clockwise. And finally, at this location here. Once I've selected the lines, hit the surface button. Okay, now at the front of the building here, I need to create a couple of extra lines. So I'm going to take this point and this point, create a line this point and this point create a line and finally I can turn these into surfaces so select these three lines hit the surface button select these lines hit the surface button and finally these lines and hit the surface button okay so I've created the basic geometry that we're going to be working with for this frame member I'm going to look at putting the engineering properties on these now to start with, I'm going to go to the Layers tab, double click on Geometry, and I'm going to switch off the Solid Render on the Surfaces. I'm then going to go to the Analysis tab, and I'm going to rename Low Case 1. 
and I'm going to call this steel dead load. Okay, now when I created this, I'm going to switch on gravity. When I created this model, I had some engineering properties already defined in the tree view. So if I click here, you'll see I've got some thick beam elements with four divisions. So I'm now going to select all the lines in the model, and I'm going to assign those thick beam elements. I also had some geometric sections. So here's the HE400 section that I'm going to use for the columns. And here's the IPE 600 section that I'm going to use for the beams. So I'm going to look face onto the model and I'm going to cross through the column sections, drag on the HE 400 section, drag a box around here, drag on the IPE 600 section. Now I'm going to zoom in to this area here and look at the orientation of the columns. They're currently orientated in this direction. I want them orientated across the model. So I'm going, going to resize and look on the side again. I'm going to cross through the column members and I'm going to drag back on my thick beam mesh, but this time put a beta angle of 90 degrees. This will reorientate the columns into the direction that I want. So if I look here now, you'll see the columns are in the direction I want. Now there is another problem here. If I look at this beam section, the beam section passes through the edge of the column. And I don't want that. So in the tree view here, I've got a thick beam element with four divisions, but I've got end conditions set on this. And I've set up the rigid links. So Lusas will auto detect where the beam is going to pass through the column and insert a rigid link at that location. So what I want to do is OK that. I'm going to look down on the side of the model and I'm going to select the beam members by crossing through them. So here, here, that one, and finally this one here. And I'm going to drag on my thick beam with rigid zones. OK, so if I now look at my isometric view, I can zoom in and have a look at this section. And you can see the beam stops at the edge of the column. This one goes into the web. So that's exactly what I want. I can finish this model off now. So I'm going to select all the lines and I'm going to drag on the material properties. Now, I'm not going to put the support conditions on until I've built the other floors of the building, but I am going to look at the floor loading. So here, I've already got a two-way spanning slab with two sub beams and a load of five kilonewtons per meter. And I'm going to assign it to a single surface to start with this one. So I'm going to put this into a load case called floor loading. So floor load and OK that. And if I switch on the load visualization, I can then zoom in and have a look at the loading. Now, if I open up the attributes tab again, so here you can see the two way. So here I've got a two way load distribution. And we've got two sub beams. So two sub beams, one, two. So this is setting up the floor loading for me for this particular model. So I can close that down. Now I want to apply this on all the surfaces. Now the simplest way of doing that is actually just to deassign it from that one panel to start with and then pick all the surfaces. Now I'm going to deselect this surface and this surfaces because I want a slightly different orientation. But when I drag that load on into the floor loading case, you can see all the sub beams and the loading distribution. I'm going to drag on the second floor load and you'll see that I've got a slightly different sub beam orientation for that place. I'm now going to switch off the load visualization and what I'm going to do is pick the entire model, not quite, just pick it now, and I'm going to copy it in the Z direction by six meters. If I rotate this around you'll see that I've got a two-story frame now. Now it's only the bottom frame that I want to be six meters high. The next one I want to be five meters high. So I'm going to go look in the X direction. I'm going to select the top members here and I'm going to move them by minus one in the Z direction. And that will give me a height of five meters. Once I've done that, I'm going to cross through everything to select it. And I'm going to copy that by five meters in the Z direction. So what this will give me is the first three floors of this building. So if I look at the isometric, you can see the frame that I've created there. Now at this point, I'm just going to select the points at the bottom of the model and put my pin supports onto the model. Now this frame that we're constructing here actually has a 10 story tower in the middle here. Now I could carry on working with this model, but a second engineer has already built that model for me. So I'm going to go to file open and open up the top of the model. So here you can see I've got a model 
Now, this is used the layout grid at level 16. So we've already agreed where we're going to join the two models. So I can now go back to the original model. This is the one that I've just created. And I'm going to go to File, Model Merge, and I can select which second model I want to merge with the first. I also want to merge the load cases. So there you can see I've ended up with a multi-story building from the two models that I've merged together. I'm just going to switch off that layout grid. And in the next session, we're going to take this on and look at the design.